Good morning. Welcome once again to our ECAC online service. We thank God for another Sunday where we can worship Him together as a family. As we listen to His Word, let us be sensitive, remove all distractions, and come to His presence with quietness of heart. Shall we pray? Father, wherever we are watching this, we know, O God, that You are here in our midst, bringing us joy, bringing us comfort, bringing us power to face another day with You. Thank You, Lord, for Your love and your grace towards us, even in the midst of a crisis. Speak to us through your word, and forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Our word for today is entitled, What God Requires of Me. What does God require of me? especially now as we look at the evils and injustice all around us. Just this week, we have heard of shocking and heartbreaking news. In Beirut, Lebanon, a large explosion occurred, killing more than 135 people and leaving thousands of people homeless. The frustrating thing about it is that officials knew the risk of this happening and was warned again and again, but did nothing. In our country, 15 billion pesos was allegedly stolen by corrupt individuals in PhilHealth. I cannot imagine that amount of money wasted coming from the pockets of hardworking Filipinos. There is even one senator who said, there is a special place in hell for people who take advantage of the misery of others. And so we ask, Lord, where is the justice? And then the pain takes on a deeper level when we are hurt by Christians, especially Christian leaders. Last year when I went to Iligan City, there was a gathering among believers in a room, and there I met two Christians who we looked up to as leaders in our ministry. They asked me, Obed, what medical school will you enroll in? I told them, Ateneo de Zamboanga. Immediately, they began to insult my decision as they enumerated other schools like CIM, UP, St. Luke's. What hurt me was that they had very loud voices embarrassing me in front of my Christian friends who were in the same room with us. I felt as if they were pointing to me how stupid my decision was, not thinking how much I prayed for it and sought the guidance even of people like Mam Lim. Yet the question remains, in the midst of injustices and the hurts that we experience all around us, especially from Christian leaders, how do we respond? Let us now turn to Micah for answers. Micah was a prophet in the southern kingdom of Judah who prophesied at during the 8th century BC under the reigns of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. At that time, the Israelites were becoming economically prosperous, but spiritually bankrupt. Other nations began to influence them as they started to turn away from the Lord, worship other gods, and do many wicked things. They began to commit many injustices, taking advantage of others and oppressing the poor. The supposed people of God became unjust unmerciful, and proud. Micah is talking especially to the leaders of God's people, the king and the prophets who were becoming corrupt. 
During this time, what does God want His people to know? I believe this is true even today. Firstly, God will judge His people for their unjust acts. Verse 2, Hear, O mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against His people. He is lodging a charge against Israel. God sees. He is concerned and He will judge us all when we stand before God at the judgment seat. He will hold all of us accountable for our actions. Secondly, God wants His people to remember His love and faithfulness for them to be grateful. Verses 3 to 5, My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you, also Aaron and Miriam. My people, remember what Balak, king of Moab, counseled and what Balaam, son of Beor, answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to Gilgal that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. How has God shown His love for you in the past? For when we truly realize God's love for us, that's when we really begin to extend God's love to others. There is this story about a blind boy begging in the streets. He held out a sign that read, I am blind. He had this small coin box where only a few people dropped their money. One day, a man saw this poor boy and got his signboard. He turned it and he wrote something at the back. Then he returned it to its place and walked on. Suddenly, more and more people began to drop coins. When the man returned to check on the boy, he, he was asked, Are you the one who wrote on my board? Yes, the man replied. What did you write? The boy asked. And he said, The day is beautiful, but I cannot see it. The sign reminded the people who were passing by to be grateful that they are not blind. Sadly, many of us are blind to the goodness, and to the love of God because we keep forgetting what He has done for us in the past. Not just dying on the cross for our sins, but also for the hundreds of blessings and answered prayers that He has given to us. We need to remember these good things these righteous acts that God has done in His love for us and be grateful so that we can extend and truly love others with the love that we have received. Thirdly, God does not want hollow and only outward worship. Verses 6-7 to With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before Him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? We can worship the Lord, but our hearts are far from Him. I remember the story of my father while he was growing up in Palawan. 
his grandfather would wake up very early in the morning to pray for hours. And yet, afterwards, binubugbog niya si Lola regularly with fierce anger and jealousy. I also remember when I was in high school, we went to this birthday party in the evening. There I met this one girl who opened up to me about her deep hurts. She revealed to us that she was the daughter of a pastor, but her mother is a mistress. So anak siya sa kabit, and the real family and the church did not know about it. I believe these evil acts do not happen overnight. But it was a slow process of, of this only outward worship without this true heart that comes from the Lord. Lastly, God wants us to turn to Him so He can make us people who are naturally just and loving and humble. It says in verse 8, He has showed you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Justice here is not just punishing evildoers, but it means what we call restorative justice. To restore those who are poor and broken. Restorative justice. Mercy here means that this concern for those who are in need. And humility means putting others before oneself. Yes, God wants us to act justly, to be merciful, and to walk humbly. But the question is, how? I believe it's really when we open up our hearts to God day by day. When we become vulnerable before the Lord and surrender our lives to Him. When we spend time in His presence, pausing, reflecting, and talking to the Lord, saying, Father, I give you my heart. Give me your desires. Not my will, but yours be done. How is our intimacy with God? Are we spending time with the Lord with open hearts and open hands? Seeking His will? For the Israelites, they were too occupied with their riches and did not depend on God anymore. Slowly being influenced by surrounding evil nations because they were not allowing God to influence them. That's why I think there is the need to really spend time with God. I remember... There were many moments in my life when before I would sleep at night, I would tell the Lord, God, pwede niyo ba akong gisingin ng maaga? I want to spend time with you. And then He would wake me up early, around 4 a.m. to read the Word, meditate, pray, and listen to His voice. This joyful experience would go on and on. Hanggang hindi ko na napapansin, ilang oras na pala ang dumadaan. And God did so many amazing things during this time. Even to leading me to approach many people who later embraced Jesus as Lord of their lives. Before we judge the people around us, let us first look at ourselves. Jesus reminds us that before we Take out the speck out of our brother's eye. Let us first remove the plank in our own eyes. And so we must ask, How is my time with the Lord and His Word? Am I still being sensitive to His leading? Or how about my family? 
Are we still spending time listening to God's word together? Because I believe injustice and pride can begin in the home. It begins when we stop listening to the Lord together as a family. As the song about this family goes, Nakikinig ka ba sa akin? Di kita gustong awayin. Pareho ang ating hangarin. Ang kadiliman ay basagin. Pero paano ba natin babasagin ang kadiliman sa ating mga pamilya? By spending time together, listening to God and to each other. I am just so thankful that when COVID-19 pandemic began, our family spent every night to pray and meditate on God's word together. That was when we felt God wanted to correct many things in our family. And so we had very many uncomfortable conversations. But it let God work mightily in our family in these past few months. Resolving many of our family issues and increasing our love for one another. Ultimately, God wants us to be a people who normally reach out to others in kindness and humility. Why? Because that is who He is. He is just and kind and loving. How? By opening our hearts to the Lord, going back to Him and letting Him shape our thoughts and our actions. Attorney Luis Tru shared to us his experience in UP. As there were rallies around them because of the injustice that was happening, some people were saying, Oust! the government officials. But then they replied, if we will oust them, who will replace these officials? Possibly, only equally evil authorities will take their place. And so Attorney and his friends in the ministry prioritized on what mattered most, sharing Jesus to individuals. Why? Why? Because the greatest justice is having our sins paid and our lives restored in Christ. We might not get the justice we seek here on this unfair world. But the more important justice, the restorative, eternal justice of the souls, that is what we should always aim for. I pray that we as a family as a church community will spend time with the Lord, that we may experience His love and let Him take over our lives as we go and share Jesus. Let me close with a true story of when a person comes to know Jesus and there is true restorative justice in his life. World history can change. In the late 1700s, English traders raided the African coast and captured 35,000 to 50,000 Africans a year and sold them to slavery. This evil practice went on for years while one man who grew up from a wealthy family started involving himself in politics. At the age of 21, William Wilberforce won the election, and became member of the parliament. At the age of 28, Christ began to work mightily in his life. At this time, Wilberforce joined with a small group of people to pray and meditate on the horrors of the slave trade. And there he heard with certainty God's call in his life to end the slavery in Britain. But Wilberforce was met with fierce opposition. Pro-slavery forces even targeted him and many of his bills were defeated in 1791, 1792, 1793, 1797, 1798, 99, 1804, and 1805. But finally, his anti-slavery efforts became successful in 1807 when the parliament abolished the slave trade 
in the British Empire. This was truly, as one historian said, one of the turning events in the history of the world. Truly, God has used many Christian men and women to change the world for good. But many followers of God have also brought shame to His name. At the start of this sermon, I told about the story of two Christian leaders who hurt me. But I realized that as a Christian leader myself, I have also hurt so many people because of my pride and for being insensitive to God's heart for others. In the midst of this pandemic, plus the corruption that we see all around us. And within us, the solution must begin with God. Let us run to Him, listen to Him, and let Him change us from the inside out. That He may make us into a people marked by justice, mercy, and love that shares Jesus through our words and actions. Let us pray. Father, you are the God of love. Thank you for saving us, Lord. We pray that you will transform us from the inside out as we we seek you, Lord. As we open up our hearts to you. As individuals, as followers of Christ, as families, and as a church community, I pray that we will be filled with your Holy Spirit. And we will go with your heart, and with your power. Thank you, Lord, for this word. I pray that it will not return unto you void. Change us, O Lord, day by day to be more and more like Jesus. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.